All right, I think we're on. Good morning, everybody. All right, we are going to <clears throat> start uh, today in a seated position for a moment. And uh, part of this is, this is a really, <clears throat> excuse me, I just woke up. <clears throat> this is a great exercise to just give yourself a little bit of looseness in the shoulders and a lot of these muscles where you tend to, or you, to hold a lot of your stress. So um, it's just a, it's kind of like a cat cow. It's just a slightly different way to do it and get into those muscles. And then we'll move on because this has been a crazy busy stressful week for me and probably for many others, at least around here in Wisconsin, just because school has started. So we're going to take it easy, but we're definitely going to build up the strength and get some of that stress out and work on the core a little bit so that we'll have a lot of energy for the weekend. So take your hands, just find a comfortable seated posture, and then take your hands and bring them behind your head. <clears throat> and then when you bring your elbows forward, you're going to tuck your chin into your chest and just a little bit round the back, like the upper back, and then you're going to inhale and look up and spread those arms out. So exhale, pull the elbows in and draw your chin into your chest. And then inhale, reach those elbows out to the sides and scoop up under your head and look up toward the sky. And follow your breath. Exhale, squeeze in, take your chin into your chest. Inhale, look up, stretch the elbows out to the sides. Support your head a little bit. And do this for a little bit longer. Just breathe. Exhale, coming in. Inhale, looking up. Couple more. All right, and then let's come on to hands and knees. And then once you're on your hands and knees, let's do a little bit of cat cow. So as you inhale, lengthen, look up. As you exhale, round, tuck the chin, pull the belly up into the spine. And follow your breath for a bit here. Press your toenails into the ground so that your belly engages more. And then let's find a downward dog. So spread the fingers out, claw the ground a bit, press back to down dog and walk it out. Press one heel toward the ground, press the other heel toward the ground. Relax the neck, gently shake up the head and nod the head. Lift your armpits up and roll your shoulders onto your back. And look up at your hands, step forward, inhale, exhale, fold, and then grab your elbows and press your top forearm into your bottom forearm, and gently swing from side to side. I would recommend a little bit of a bend in the knees, maybe even a big bend in the knees, but just make sure the knees are not locked out. All right, and then take your hands to your hips, squeeze your elbows toward each other, bend your knees, come up with a flat back, big inhale. 
And exhale, take your arms to the side. So we'll go for our side stretch as well. Take the arms up on the inhale. Lift and stretch over to the right-hand side. I'll show from a different angle. And then bend the knees a little bit. Keep stretching to the right and cross your left leg behind your right. Squeeze your inner thighs together. And then come on up on the inhale, go over to the other side. And bend your knees a little bit and cross your right leg behind your left and keep stretching to your left. And come up on the inhale, release your arms to the sides. Do a couple big shoulder rolls both directions. And let's go for our first sun salutation. Take the arms up on the inhale, look up toward the thumbs. Exhale, hinge at the hips and fold. <clears throat> inhale, lengthen it up. Exhale, plant your hands and step back. Press forward, lift your chin. Lower down halfway. Inhale, tops the feet. And exhale, downward dog. All right, so as you walk it out a little bit, just check your feet. Feet should be about hips distance apart. Toes mostly pointing forward. You might even want to be a little bit pigeon-toed, so the outer edges of your feet are parallel to the edges of your mat. Lift your armpits up. Roll your shoulders onto your back. Notice where your weight is in your hands. Press down a little bit more firmly into your thumb and first finger area, and that's only because most of us don't tend to put much weight there in the first place. We tend to favor the pinky edges of the hands, so evenly distribute the weight in the hands. Again, relax the neck. And look up at your hands, step forward, inhale, exhale, relax and fold. Inhale, take it up to the sky. And exhale, arms to the sides. And take another inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, step at your back and press forward. Keep your chin lifted, press your heels back as well. Lower down halfway. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. All right, once you're in your down dog, grab the back of your left ankle with your right foot, kind of like a lobster claw, and gently press your left heel toward the ground. We're trying to get into the calf and hamstring, <clears throat> also Achilles tendon here. Just give it a little stretch. Yeah, and switch sides. Grab the other ankle, gently press that heel in the direction of the ground. It may not actually touch, but just get a nice little stretch there. All right, let that one go. Look up, inhale, step forward. Exhale, relax. Inhale. Flat back, come up. Exhale, arms to sides. All right, let's do one more set A. Arms up on the inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, step back. Press forward. Lower down. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, down dog. All right, from this position, Transfer weight into your right hand and grab your right leg with any part, any part of your right leg with your left hand. So it could be closer to the hip, it could be closer to the ankle, and then gently tug on that right leg and look under your right shoulder. And let's 
switch sides. Grab any part of your left leg with your right hand and gently pull. Let that one go. We'll look up, inhale, step forward. Exhale, relax. Inhale, take it to the sky. Exhale, arms to the sides. All right, sun salutation B, big toes together, heels slightly apart. Take the arms up on the inhale, sink back into Utkatasana, first pose. So we're trying to get into the upper back here. Drop your shoulders down your back a little bit and try to line your arms up with your ears, and you're going to feel your upper back doing a lot more work as you drop the shoulders and try to line up. Pull the front ribs in a little bit. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, step back. Press forward, press your heels back, make sure those legs are nice and strong, lower down. Inhale, up dog, and exhale, down dog. Right leg lunges, left heel pivots and plants. So your left foot's going to be at about a 45 degree angle. Take it up for warrior one. And look up toward the thumbs. There's a bit of a tendency for the pelvis to tilt here. So try to pull your front points, hip points up here and zip up the low belly. And hands down to the ground. Step your right leg back. Press forward, lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Left leg lunges. Take it up on the inhale. Lift your front hip points. And on your next exhale, hands down to the ground, left leg back, <clears throat> press forward, get those legs nice and straight and strong, lower down. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. All right, down dog is great, but sometimes, sometimes it's much, much nicer to go into a child's pose. So just keep that in mind if your wrists bug you or if your just shoulders aren't still a little bit stiff, or you're just feeling super exhausted, this is a great posture. All right, spread this wings out wide, flip your toes over, find your downward dog. Look up, inhale, step forward, big toes touching. Exhale, fold, and sink into your Utkatasana. Take your arms up and look up. Exhale, straighten the legs, arms to the sides. All right, we're going to add a bit to that sun salutation being. Take the arms up on the inhale, sit back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, plant the hands, step back. <clears throat> Press forward, lift your chin, lower down. Inhale, up dog, and exhale, down dog. Right leg lunges. Take it up on the inhale, and then open it for warrior two. So once you're in warrior two, drop the shoulders. Lift your triceps. So as you drop your shoulders, engage your tricep muscles. So sometimes it's a little hard to find them. They kind of dangle. So if you turn the palm of your hand up toward the ceiling, that'll wrap your triceps around your arm, get them engaged. And then you can do that and keep trying to drop those shoulders. Pin all your hands down to the ground. Step that right leg back. Press forward, lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Left leg lunges. Take it up on the inhale. And then open up for warrior two. All right, same thing here. You don't want dangling triceps. So maybe turn the palms of the hands up toward the sky. Wrap them around your arm. 
And once they're engaged, you can turn those palms back down again. Look straight down your middle left finger. All right, pivot your hands down to the ground. Step your left leg back. Press forward, lift your chin, get those legs strong, lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And again, child's pose is always a great option. It takes a few breaths here, about five. Relax your neck. And look up. Inhale, step or jump your feet forward, big toes touching. Exhale, relax and fold. Inhale, come into Utkatasana, take the arms up and look up. Exhale, straighten the legs, arms to the sides. All right, we're going to do about a minute Utkatasana. That's a long time. At least it feels like a long time sometimes. So make sure your breaths are nice and deep. And if you need to take breaks, take breaks. So you're going to interlace your fingers. Make sure your big toes are still touching. Press the palms of the hands out and then sink down. And we're going to go for 20 breaths here, which is roughly a minute. Zip up the belly a little bit. Halfway there. Four more breaths. Inhale, come on up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step it back. Press forward, lift your chin, lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Right leg lunges. Take that right leg forward, big inhale, and then open it up for warrior two. All right, once you're in warrior two, straighten up your front leg. Let's go through a triangle here. We'll reach through the right hand side, bring your right hand down to your leg somewhere. Take that left arm toward the sky. So the trick here is not how low you go. What's important is if you're lengthening through the right side and not collapsing through the right side. So keep lifting through the right side. Use that left arm to pull your right armpit up. And zip up the low belly, pull it into your low back. Anchor down through your back heel. All right, now pinwheel down, bring your hands to either side of your right foot, turn your left toes forward, and fold over your right leg. So if you're tight in the hamstrings and your hands don't come to the ground very comfortably, then bring your hands to blocks as you fold over that right leg. All right, now we're going to try for warrior three. Same thing here. If you're using blocks, you can continue to use the blocks. Come forward into a nice little lunge here. Take a moment. And then push yourself back and straighten up the front leg. And then do it again. Come into a nice little lunge here. Just checking in with that back quadricep. And straighten up three more times. Exhale as you come into your nice little lunge. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, come into your lunge. 
Inhale, straighten. One more time. Okay, so you can either take little hops with that back foot, just a little hop, little hop, little hop, and get forward, or you can just come right into it. And then here's your warrior three with blocks. If you want to try warrior three without blocks, bring your hands into your heart center or pick some different arms here. So you've got lots of options. All right, so come back into your lunge, and then you're going to drop your back knee, plant your left hand on a block on the ground, turn your right toes out to the right, maybe even peel up your right foot off the ground. So some people prefer to put sort of the weight into the pinky edge of their foot, and then reach your right arm back. So we're doing an open twist here. Roll your shoulders onto your back. If it seems appropriate, bend your back knee, maybe grab your back foot. But if you're still feeling pretty tight through the quads, don't feel like you have to achieve that posture. Just reach back and see if you can bend your knee a little bit. All right, and then pinwheel your hands down to the ground. Turn your toes forward. Step your left leg forward, big toes touching. Exhale, fold. Sink into Utkatasana, take your arms up and look up. Two more big breaths here. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, step back. Get those legs nice and strong, lower down. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, down dog. Left leg lunges. Take it up on the inhale. And then open up for warrior two. All right, now that you've got a nice warrior two, we're going to go ahead and straighten up that front leg in front triangle. So reach to the left hand side. Bring that left hand down somewhere to the leg. Take the right arm toward the sky and then really lengthen through the left side. That right arm can lift your left side up a little bit. Push down through your back heel. Big breaths. Zip up the low belly a little bit. All right, pinwheel toward the ground. Again, you may want blocks just in case you're a little tight in hamstrings, which is pretty normal for most people. Turn those right toes forward and then fold over that left leg. Big, big breaths here. Got some massive muscles that are trying to warm up and wake up this morning. So make sure you're breathing deeply. All right, now let's do a little bit of bending and just get the quadriceps and hamstrings to loosen up a little bit more. So you're going to exhale, come down, and inhale, straighten up. And exhale, bend. And inhale, straighten up. Try that. See how that feels. All right, now we're going to get into Warrior Three. So again, you can just right into it or take a moment and just inch into it. So nice deep breaths. Five here. Just notice you're working on hamstrings, you're working on glute muscles, there's a lot happening. All right, come on down. And then once you come down, drop your back knee, turn your left toes out to the left, plant your right hand under your right shoulder or on a block. Maybe even peel that left foot up off the floor a little bit, and then bring your left hand to your thigh and look over your left shoulder. 
and that may be enough. You may be still opening up this outer glute area and the quads. If you feel like you can put a little bit more into it, bend your right knee, maybe reach back with your left arm, see if you can grab the foot. Roll both shoulders onto your back. And then unwind. Let's step back to child's pose for a moment. So take the knees wide, find a child's pose. Press forward into the mat so that you're actually pushing your hips back towards your heels. Take some really big deep breaths, big inhales, big exhales. All right, and then flip your toes over and find a downward dog. Walk it out a little bit. All right, the hamstrings should be starting to warm up. If you've got really tight hamstrings, you've still got work to do, but they should start feeling like they're a little bit looser now. Look up, inhale, step forward, big toes touching. Exhale, fold. Utkatasana, sink in your chair, take your arms up. Exhale, straighten the legs, arms to the sides. All right, let's do one more sun citation B variation. Take the arms up on the inhale, sit back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, step back. Get those legs nice and strong, lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Right leg lunges. Take it up on the inhale. Open up for warrior two. All right, this is one of my favorite core exercises. So you're going to bring your hands to the back of your head, push your head back into your hands, and then drop your left elbow towards your left leg as if you were an exalted warrior. Keep pushing your head back. All right, now drop your right elbow towards your right knee and press your head back. And pivot your hands down the ground. Let's do a side plank, left hand or left forearm. Come to the pinky edge of your left foot and take your right arm toward the sky. And then bring that right arm next to your ear so you get a nice side stretch. And pin your hands down to the ground. Step or press forward. Lower down. Exhale. Inhale. Up dog. And exhale. Down dog. Left leg lunges. Take it up on the inhale. Open it for warrior two. And let's try that same thing with the core. Take your hands to the back of your head. Press your head back into your hands. You're starting to open up those shoulders. And then drop your right elbow towards your right leg. There's a bit of a tendency to start straightening your front leg, so try to keep a nice bend in it. And inhale, come on up. And drop your left elbow down somewhere near your left knee, and then press your head back. Nice. All right, bring your hands down to the ground. Side plank on your right side. So right hand or right forearm, pinky edge of your right foot. Take your left arm toward the sky first, claw the ground, and then bring that left arm next to your ear. All right, left hand back to the ground. Find a down dog, walk it out. All 
Look up, inhale, step forward, big toes touching. Exhale, fold. Utkatasana, sink into your chair, take your arms up. And exhale, straighten the legs, arms the sides. All right, so let's go for a Prasadita Parachanasana. Take your legs pretty wide. So they should be, ankles should be roughly underneath the wrists. Outer edges of the feet parallel to the short edges of the mat. And then let's start really simple. Bring your hands to your hips, lift your heart on the inhale, and then exhale forward bend. From here, slide your hands down your legs. So maybe your hands are on your thighs. Maybe they come to your shins. If you can get to the toes, grab the big toes or the outsides of the feet. Squeeze your legs together. Make sure you've got weight in the inner heels, outer heels, front heels. And as you inhale, lengthen, and as you exhale, relax. Tighten up the tops of the thighs. You want your kneecaps to lift a little bit. All right, bend the knees, bring your hands to your hips, inhale, come on up, let's say then add into the shoulders. So you're gonna interlace your fingers behind your back, lift your heart, stretch your fist down, and then exhale forward, bend again. The arms might come off the back, it really just depends on how tight your shoulders are. You can also go for bent elbows, and I would highly recommend lifting your chin. So if you lift your chin, it's gonna roll the shoulders onto your back more. And if you're really tight in the shoulders, you may just keep your fist on your hips and squeeze your elbows toward each other, but keep your chin lifted. There's a really huge desire to tuck your chin into your chest in this posture, so keep lifting your chin out of your chest. All right, bend the knees, inhale, come on up. Shake it out a little bit, and then we're gonna go for the other grip. So you pick to your dominant grip, you're gonna put the other thumb and first finger on top. So do that. Lift your chin. Exhale, fold forward. Make sure your weight is evenly distributed in your feet. Take some of the weight out of the backs of the heels, but make sure your inner heels, outer heels, and front heels are nicely weighted. Lift your kneecaps, zip up your belly, lift your chin. All right, bend the knees, inhale, come on up. Nice work. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple bouncing postures and then we'll come down to the ground. So toe heel in. And let's go for um, half moon. So we've done a lot of hamstring work, and half moon is great because it works on the outer hip and the inner hip at the same time. It's very, very nice. It, build, it builds bone, as a matter of fact. So what you want to do is point your right foot forward first, come into something like a warrior two, and you're going to come into, essentially it's a triangle, but it's on one leg. So find your block. Block is going to line up with your pinky toe, roughly 18 inches in front of it. You can go without a block, but it's a lot harder. So you're gonna find that block in front of you, take that left arm up. You can also um, hold on to like a wall if you want to, or a chair, or you can do it the old fashioned way and have nothing at all, just hang out here in space. So once you're in this posture, ooh, once you're in this posture, you're trying to stack your left hip on top of your right hip a little bit more. You're also trying to avoid this right knee rolling in toward the big toe. So putting a tiny little bend in your right knee is going to line your kneecap up with your middle three toes, and it'll be a little safer for the ligaments in the knee. And then again, if you feel like it, you can bend that left knee, see if you can grab the foot. It's a little bit of a back bend. All right, and then come on out of it, and let's go for the other side. So, left leg. Find something that kind of looks like a warrior two. Get yourself planted. Right hand can come to the hip, and then you're going to come forward. Block will come somewhere in front of that pinky toe. 
try to stack that right hip on top of the left hip. But it's not just about stacking. You want to make sure this left knee is not rolling in, creating this internal rotation of the leg. So a little bit of a bend in your standing leg will keep that kneecap lined up with your middle three toes. And then again, once you feel like you've got something stable, you may want to play around a little bit with grabbing your right foot. All right, and then come on up. Nice job. Okay, last one. Let's go for <sighs> trying to take my breath here. That was actually pretty hard for me for a second there. Okay, so we're going to go for um, eagle pose. All right, eagle pose can be tricky, and one of the reasons why is not all of us have the flexibility in the hips to wrap all the way around. So a block can be really useful. So I put a block here to the outside of my left foot, and then spread the toes on the left foot so you have a nice wide base. Stand on that left leg, bend it. You're going to cross that right leg as high over the left leg as you can, and then try to pull that foot in. If the foot doesn't come in very well, you're going to put it on the block. So that's a great place to start. And then eventually, over time, you will be able to get that right foot behind the left calf, maybe. Um, don't worry if it doesn't ever happen, but you will see progress. So nice deep breaths, and then right elbow under the left elbow, and then drag your elbows down to get a nice shoulder stretch. And then you can also kind of play with bringing the elbows toward the knees this is a bigger hip stretch here. And the knees are gently pushing out into each other. And the great thing about this posture is you don't have to get all wrapped up into a pretzel for it to do something. You can still feel something even if your foot is on a block and you're just kind of bending the knees a little bit. These hips tend to be very, very tight on most of us. Okay, let's go for the other side. So again, if you're using the block, put the block over to the other side, outside your right foot. Spread your toes out, bend that right leg, bring the left leg over so you can get your foot to the block. If you can, maybe get a little bit closer to the leg. Take the arms out, and then left elbow is going to come under the right elbow. Once you're here, gently press the knees out into each other. Stick your tailbone out behind you, zip up your low belly, and you may even want to experiment with just dragging those elbows down toward the knees. Big breaths. All right, and then come on out of this one, and then let's come to the ground. So take the arms up on the inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, step your right leg back. All right, bring your arms to the inside of your right leg. So if you've got a block and you want to bring your forearms to a block, that's a great way to go. If you've got some tight quads. So breathe here. Now, everybody's got different shaped hip sockets. Some people have um, more narrow oval shaped hip sockets, and if that's the case, this may be a really difficult posture for you. You may feel pinching or impingement in your hips. So make sure you don't feel a pinch in your hips. If you do, adjust your feet a little bit. Let your legs swing out a little bit or turn the toes out a little bit. Just make sure that that hip doesn't feel like it's, you know, sticking. Exactly. So from here, wherever you are, squeeze the inner thigh in a little bit. Make sure you're using your inner thighs. It just doesn't have to look pretty. It doesn't have to be perfectly lined up. So breathe deeply. All right, we're going to shift our weight back. So take the weight back so that your hips are over your left knee. And then if you want blocks to give you a little bit of support here, if you can't get your hands to the ground, 
come up to blocks, they can even go higher. Drag your right heel back and do a nice forward bend with your right leg. I like to occasionally change directions with my toes. You've got three hamstrings here, five insertion points. So if you turn in a little bit more, you're going to get a little bit more of the inner hamstring. If you take time to kind of turn out a little bit more, you'll get a little bit more of the outer hamstring. Continue to drag your heel back, but just experiment with the direction your toes are pointing. All right, we're going to try for something that sort of looks like the slits. So slide your right leg forward, slide your left leg back, but resist the slide a little bit. Come into this gently and controlled. And I can do the splits, but that doesn't mean that's what you're supposed to be doing. What you're trying to do is just make sure you're getting an even quadricep stretch and hamstring stretch at the same time. This posture is Fantastic. So even if you don't really achieve anything that's really pretty, the fact that you're stretching out quadriceps and hamstrings at the same time is really calming for your vagus nerve. Your vagus nerve is this big wandering nerve through your body that is in charge of your parasympathetic system. And often when you come out of a posture like this, after having really worked your vagus nerve in different directions, um, you feel like a real sense of peace and calm. So that's why we're doing this. It's not because we're trying to show off and do performative yoga. We're trying to just get this nice big stretch happening through the vagus nerve and through some really big muscles that don't tend to move this direction very often. All right, so gently come out of this posture and take a moment and take child's pose. We just did an asymmetrical stretch, so we want to get that SI joint in the hips to come to a happy place again, just in case it got stretched one direction too much the, more than the other. And then we will go to the other side. And just notice if you feel like some real peace, some calm settling over you here. This is one of the best postures to achieve that. Okay, so let's go for the other side. So you're going to lunge your left leg forward. Maybe bring your forearms to a block. Maybe your hands are on the ground. It just depends on how tight your quads are. So again, let that left leg um, find a happy place. You do want to squeeze it in a little bit just to use and engage the inner thighs but it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up. So if toes straight forward isn't working so well for you, you can go toes a little bit out to the side. You can also just let your leg kind of swing open a little bit. So keep using your inner thigh and squeeze in, but you can let the leg swing open. So big breaths, drag your right knee forward a little bit. Bring it back and warm up those hamstrings a little bit more. Flex your left toes back towards your face. Drag your left heel back. Maybe a little bit of a forward bend over that left leg. Breathe deeply. As the breath starts helping you loosen up these hamstrings, then you may want to turn the toes in a little bit and just get into that other side of the hamstrings or turn the toes out a little bit. Move toward the outer edge, and just kind of play. Breathe deeply. Figure out which hamstring's tighter. All right, something a little bit more like the slit. So slide that left leg forward a little bit. Walk that back leg back a little bit. You may not look at all on this side like you looked on the other side. This side may be very, very different. We are not perfectly balanced creatures. We have a dominant arm 
So you are going to find that since you have a dominant arm, you have a dominant leg, one hot side is going to be tighter than the other. In general, right-handers are tight on the left side. Big breathing, never forget those breaths. All right, and then slowly come out of this. Take a child's pose, even out the pelvis. All right, we're going to do an arm balance. And we're going to do an arm balance with a twist. So the twist is actually what matters, not the arm balance. It's just that if you get into a deep enough twist, you may want to play with the arm balance. So you're going to lunge that right leg forward. And then we're going to go for the twist first. So you're going to take that left arm up and over and stretch over to your right. All right, now take that left elbow to the outside of your right leg. Lift your rib cage up and twist it over to the right a little bit more. And then play with your, um, just with your twist for right now. So bring your hands together, maybe even lift your back knee up and just play with that. So you're, you're getting that outer hip stretch, IT band. And then if that's working pretty well for you, you can take it that next step into an arm balance. So that left arm needs to stay to the outside of that right leg. And then you can kind of just gently tip over. You can even use your block to tip over a little bit. So my left arm is still connected to my right leg. And then I'm going to take my hands roughly shoulder distance apart, and I can point them any direction I want to. And then lift your back leg up. So then I make a little shelf with my left arm, so my right leg is resting on the back of that shelf. And then right leg lifts up, and then left leg lifts up. So you can just kind of play with that, see how that feels. It's even worth it to come out of it and try again. So again, remember the twist is the most important part here. Yikes. Got a door in my way. Beautiful. All right, take a moment. Child's pose. You may want to shake out your wrists. If your wrists are a little bit bugged right now, place your thumb right across the inside of your wrist, press down, squeeze on those nine ligaments and shake it out. Do the same thing on the other side. That'll give you a little bit of rest and acupressure. All right, let's go for the other side. So lunge your left leg forward. Remember the twist is what matters. Take that right arm up and over and stretch over to your left. All right, go for the twist. Take that right arm to the outside of your left leg. Lift your belly up, pull it around a little bit. Bring your hands together, look over your left shoulder. Remember to breathe. All right, and then right hand to the ground, left hand to the ground, roughly shoulder distance apart. Extend that right leg out, get that back knee off the ground. Then you got to figure out how to bend that right arm and rest the left leg on the back of the right arm. And then breathe. All right, and then take a moment and let's do a happy baby day bug. So lie on your back, 
Put your feet up in the air. Grab your big toes. And just rock from side to side. All right, let's do pigeon. So let's do pigeon on our backs. You're going to lie on your back and then cross your right leg over your left leg. So if you're lying on your back here, left knee is pointing up towards the ceiling, right ankle crosses over. Flex your right toes back towards your knee. Bring that left leg in. Grab the back of the left thigh or the front of the left shin. Pull that left leg in, but resist a little bit. Exhale, relax. And just play with this a little bit. I like rocking from side to side. And I also recommend rolling your tailbone toward the ground and getting just a little bubble of air under your low back. That way you're not really, um, the problem with the low back is that it should have a little bit of a curve in it. And often when we're on our backs, we press that low back into the ground, which isn't terrible for it. It just means that it's not really neutral and aligned. And it usually means you're not using the right muscles to support it. So trying to get your tailbone to roll to the ground and getting a little bit of a curve in the low back and then using your low belly muscles to support that curve is a habit you want to get into. So see if you can do that. And it'll make it a little bit more intense hip opener as well. All right, roll over onto the left side. Don't tip over, but get really close. And then stretch that right knee out to the side. You can also push your elbow into your right leg a little bit and help it move out. All right, let's switch legs. So cross your left leg, just below your right knee on the thigh. Stretch your left knee out to the side. Flex your left toes back in toward the knee. Take the back of the thigh or the front of the shin. Grab on and then gently pull on the right leg, but also resist. And again, you can kind of just gently press that left elbow into the left thigh to help point it out to the side a little bit more. All right, rock over onto your right side a little bit. Not enough to tip over, but close. And then just hang out there and breathe into that left hip. All right, unwind. Let's do this again. We're going to come back to this right hip. Cross that right ankle over. Now we're going to try to go a little bit deeper. So you're going to try to hook that right arm under your right leg near the knee. Notice how my head and shoulders are coming off the ground. You're going to try to hook your left arm under the leg near the ankle. Now that part is harder. If you can't do that, just grab onto the foot. Just make sure your ankle is nice and straight. So from here, you're trying to bring the shin in a little bit closer to your chest. And then see if you can extend your left leg. If you can't extend your left leg or it hurts, put the foot back on the ground. Otherwise, see if you can find an extension. And then a little bit of rocking from side to side never hurts. See if you can get your head and shoulders back to the ground. All right, try the other side. So cross your left ankle over and then hook your left elbow underneath your left thigh or left calf near the knee. Try to hook the right elbow underneath. If that's not going to work, especially since this might be the tighter side, just grab your foot, keep your ankle straight. 
And then put your right foot on the ground, head to the ground, rock from side to side. If it seems feasible, extend that right leg. It's going to be a little tougher on this side if you're a right-hander. Big breaths. Take about two to three more big breaths. All right, and then from here, relax for a moment. Put your feet on the sides of your mat. Drop your knees in toward each other, and that'll help create this nice neutral curve in your low back just in case it got a little flattened out on those last couple of exercises. All right, let's go for a plank. So I like putting a plank underneath my belly just to remind me not to sink. Some people have the exact opposite problem. So um, some people sink down in a plank and they hurt their backs, or and some people are their hips are way up. So if you're a person whose hip is way up, hips are way up, a block is good just for reference. Trying to get the hips down enough that you can just feel yourself slightly hovering over the block. If you're a sinker, then the block is going to protect you from hurting your back. So the block is there. Put it close to the hips, low, low belly. You can even start by just bringing your hips to the block, right? And then you've got the hips that are in line. So the hips are actually slightly lower than your shoulders, slightly. And that's where the core strength comes in, is trying to figure out how to just keep slightly lifting up without going high. So from here, shoulders... Relax out to the sides. Chest is going to sink down between the arms a little bit. And then you're going to lift your hips off the block, press your heels back, and breathe. Let's do it for 20 breaths here. If you feel yourself fatiguing, see if you can get your legs to do more work. Three more breaths. All right, drop those knees, walk it back, take a child's pose. Let's go for one more quadricep stretch. So Everybody's going to be a little bit different here. Um, you're going to lie on your belly, zip up your belly, bend your left leg, prop yourself up on your right forearm, and bring your left heel in. So I'm opening up my left shoulder. I'm rolling the left shoulder onto my back. Stretch your left knee toward the ground or toward the bottom of your mat. What you're trying to do is bring the top of your femur bone into the back of your hip socket. And so think of your, your thigh bone as sort of a seesaw. If you press your knee part of your thigh bone down, it's going to pull the top of the femur up into the back of your hip socket. So zip up the low belly, gently press your left knee down or press it toward or stretch it toward the back of your mat. Keep trying to zip up your low belly and pull your low belly off the ground. Wherever your left foot goes is fine. So your left foot might come to your hip, it might come even lower, it might be really far away. As long as you feel like you're getting a quadricep stretch, you're in good shape. And then keep trying to roll that left shoulder onto your back. All right, let's go for the other side. Plant your left forearm, grab your right foot. Again, stretch your right knee toward the bottom of the mat or toward the ground. Zip up your belly. Roll that right shoulder onto your back. All right, 
right now, from here, let's go ahead and find our hero pose. So this is going to be a little bit different for everybody. You may not be able to sit down on the ground between your feet. So I'm sitting on the ground between my feet, but some people have to use a block or two and sit on a block or two. So if you need to come up a little higher, do so. And some people need to come up really high, like three or four blocks. So whatever you can do is fine. We just want to get these quadriceps just a little bit more warmed up from a slightly different angle. So squeeze your legs in toward the midline. The inner thighs do not need to touch. You just want to make sure that you're gently squeezing in and using your inner thighs. So I'll just show from a different angle here. And you'll see that my knees and thighs are not really touching, but they're pretty close to parallel. So they're just kind of squeezing into the midline. Toes are spreading out nice and wide. And then what you're going to do is you're going to walk yourself back a little bit. If you are on blocks, you're not going to walk back much, but it doesn't really matter because you're going to feel the stretch happening through your psoas and quadriceps the way it should be. And that's where we come at the quadriceps from a couple different directions here. So from here, if you're on the flexible side of the quadriceps, take a moment, lift your hips up, bring your hips slightly closer to your knees, and then see if you can maybe come down a little bit more. If that feels okay, then lift your hips up one more time, readjust, and come down to the ground. And then the full-blown posture is arms over your head. So again, if your knees are screaming at you, do not go this deep. Your quadriceps are not ready yet. You want to make sure your quadriceps are loose enough that your knees are not mad at you. We want to protect our knees and make sure that those joints are working for the next few decades. All right, now we have warmed up enough to get a little bit of a back bend in here. So we're going to use our two blocks for the back bend. The back bend really needs inner thighs and low belly working for you. So a good way to encourage that action to happen is to put a block between your feet. So I would go long ways between the feet. And then you can put a block between your inner thighs. So you can put a block between your knees, I would go medium if you're going between knees. If you're coming up closer to the groin, go skinny. So I'm squeezing into the blocks using my inner thighs and low belly and then bring my hands to my butt. And then from here, lift your heart, press down into your hips. Lift your heart, lift your heart. Zip up your belly, pull the front ribs in. Make sure you're not compressing that low back. If your low back is compressing, you need to lift your collarbones more and lift your spine more. Keep squeezing the blocks. And then if you're not compressing the spine, everything's feeling pretty good, you might want to experiment. Just see if you can reach back with one hand and touch your heel. Keep lifting through the heart here. And then you might want to try the other side. Keep lifting through the heart. Maybe go for both legs, both arms. Keep lifting through the heart. Notice how my chest is stretching toward the ceiling. And then go ahead and sit down. All right. Take a moment and rest, just in case that low back got a little bit compressed, you want to give it a chance to relax. All right, let's throw the hips and the back together, the uh, shoulders, everything together. So we're going to go for a posture called mermaid. Um, I'm not sure it's really called mermaid, but that's kind of the, the lexicon. So um, from here, you're going to come into pigeon first, and then you're going to try to add in that quadricep behind you. So it's going to be a back bend. So you're going to lunge your right leg forward. Find a pigeon that works for you. So for a lot of people in this mermaid posture, your right foot way back towards your left hip works just fine. It doesn't have to be like this really crazy big hip opener pigeon where your shin is parallel to the front of your mat. So find something that works. And then what will happen is, 
For many people, when you squeeze in, your hips will lift off the ground a little bit. Also, totally acceptable. You might also want to block because since you're on that right hip, sometimes you have this tendency to kind of swing over to the right. So if you have your block in your right hand, that'll keep you a little bit more upright. So find your pigeon. Nice deep breaths. And then we're going to try to bend that back leg. And that might be enough. You might be here and you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's tons. So you can bring your left hand to the back of your head. Notice I'm squeezing my legs together and my hips just lift a little bit. Push your head back into your hand. You're in a great place here. If you want to add it in, you can grab that foot and you can even try to hook that foot into the elbow. This is if you're starting to get a little bit more flexible. And then the full blown posture, you take your right hand behind your head and try to grab your left hand. So if you feel like you're not stable enough for that, keep your right hand on your block. Keep zipping up your low belly. Press your head back. All right, and then let's go from the other side. So down dog is a great one. Walk it out a little bit. And left leg. Keep breathing. Find your pigeon. And you should feel pretty warmed up here. We did a bunch of pigeony stuff. Take that block over to the left just in case you need it for some support. Squeeze your legs together. Zip up your belly, lift your heart up, and then maybe bend that back leg, maybe put the foot in the elbow, maybe just grab the foot. You're going to try for a balance. Left hand's going to come behind. See if you can grab your right hand. If your balance isn't so good and you're trying to work through those hips a little bit more, keep the hand on the block. See what you can do with that right foot. And then release. Find a child's pose. All right, so maybe a headstand, a handstand, a forearm balance. If you are ready to quit, you can go for our legs up against the wall. So if you are doing a handstand, I'm going to move this a little bit, use my bookcase. Okay, so if you're doing a handstand and you're kind of new at this, then being against a wall is great. So basically where my feet are right now is where my hands are going to be. So I'm going to put them there, and then my legs are going to go straight across just like, just essentially lift the legs up. They're going to do the same thing that they're doing right now. So hands come to the ground, claw the ground. Sink the chest down a couple times between the arms. Make sure your arm bones are in the shoulder sockets. And then keep those shoulders over the wrists. And then you will take a foot up the wall and then just test it out. How's that doing? And if it's doing great, then go up a little higher. And maybe take a leg up, but just make sure you feel comfortable with it, right? Claw the ground a bit. You gotta use some finger muscles here. right knee into your chest and give yourself a little squeeze. Take your right arm out to the side and do a little twist. 
Right leg comes across the body to the left. Stick your tailbone out. Big, deep, slow breaths. Right, let's go for the other side. Bring that left knee in. Squeeze it into your chest. Extend your right leg. Take your left arm out to the side. Take that left leg across the body. Make sure you have a nice little curve in your low back. Look over your left shoulder. And then find your Shavasana. So Shavasana is not your preferred way to rest. Find something else. And there are a lot of ways to rest. You can take a lock under your hips and take your legs up. You can take a block under your hips and go a little higher with the block and keep your legs down. You can also put blocks under your shoulders. So just Find something for you. If you feel like you didn't get enough back bend in, then under the shoulders is great. But if you felt like you did a lot with the hips and low back, that block under the hips is great. Roll your eyes in toward the midline where your eyes and nose meet. Channel your breath through that third eye, right where your pituitary gland is. Imagine the breath coming in and out right through there. And then start wiggling your fingers and toes and roll your wrists and ankles in small circles. And then switch directions. Take your arms over your head. Find a full body stretch. Yawn a couple times if you want. Take a big inhale, stretch it out. And then a big exhale, relax. One more time, let's hold the breath for five counts. Take a big inhale, stretch out your body. 
pull the stretch on one, on two, on three, on four, on five. Big exhale, relax. And then slowly make your way up. You may want to roll over onto one side first. Come to a comfortable seated posture. Bring your hands to your heart center. Take a couple breaths, check in, see how you feel. And then take a moment to thank yourself for dragging yourself to your mat, taking care of yourself, making space for yourself. Bring your hands up to your forehead for kind thoughts, down to your lips for kind words, and down to your heart center for kind intentions. <laughs> 